Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, CITN, is the issue of uh, tax holidays. Uh, currently, about 107 companies are benefiting from the federal government's tax exemption. And, uh, you know, there are pros and cons to this issue. Uh, at the point, at a time when the the country seeks revenue to handle some national issues or some are arguing if we should be treading this path at this time but let's discuss this with a partner at tax services transact and he is also a chartered accountant and an auditor uh, joins us here in the studio mr victor athe mr athe good afternoon and thank you for your time good afternoon thank you for having me so um do you worry with the chartered institute of taxation that at, at this time we shouldn't be talking about tax holidays waivers exemption whichever name you want to give it okay so um the the issue of tax holidays um um, is a delicate issue, but it's one we have to um, look at um, very um, delicately. Now, the whole idea of tax holidays is to drive investment, right? It's a strategic um, initiative of government to encourage, you know, more investment in the economy. However, I, I do think, from my experience, in what I've seen play out in Nigeria so far, that there is a need, um, you know, after you know, granting tax holidays is just not enough, right? We have to go back periodically as a nation to see whether the objectives of these tax holidays have been achieved. How do we do that? You know, when you grant tax holidays, you expect a commensurate level of investment or a level of investment that will, you know, um, you know that, that will bring benefits to the government, right? So, it's not just not enough to have um, tax holiday schemes or incentives. There is a need for governments to periodically look, at, do an assessment of whether the country is reaping, you know, benefits, the expected benefits from these tax incentives. And um, on a case-by-case -case basis, right, we can now determine whether some incentives should be, um, you know, put set aside you know, stuff, things like that. And we haven't been doing the assessments, or have we? Yeah, so, so I think that's where um, we're lacking. You know, there's a need for that assessment to be periodically done in an objective manner, right? It's not enough to um, uh, to talk about these things. You know, there has to be action. You know, there has to be um, a concerted, a, you know, proper plan of action to ensure that Nigeria, I mean, we're, not, we're, not, we're not losing revenue from tax incentive schemes. Mm. So um, we have the Presidential Committee on Fiscal Policy and Tax Reform, but it seems they've been busy this... I mean, they've been kind of quiet for some months now. Perhaps I'm the one who has, been, who has not been followed. Should this be part of their, of their um, responsibilities? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. If you recall the um, chairman of the committee um, yeah, earlier when he gave his um, quick win report, you know, to the president, I think sometime last year, he, um, they made it clear, right, that their work will be in phases, right? Um, because there's a whole lot of um, work to do. I mean, when you talk about tax um, reforms, fiscal policy, it's a whole lot. I mean, they have to look at a whole lot of issues, right? Um, I think the next phase, um, I think they have about six months um, they, 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 you know, based on what, you know, what I understand, they have six months to come up with their progress report. Of course, it's going to take time. It's not something that um, well, it's not it's not something that we're going to uh, we're going to be able to see um, very quickly. It's going to take time for them to come up with their report. They have to examine a lot of things, box of incentives, um, ease of doing business. Look at the various tax laws and all of that. Mm. So um, last year, there was the Finance Act 2023. Um, and then, you know, you had the issue of enhancing compliance and enforcement modalities around taxation. And, you know, we even talk, we talk about AI, for instance. We talk about, I think there's a voice... <laughs> There's a part that is supposed to use a voice prompting or so, all of them to boost, because we know the government has come to say they are not looking to increase tax, but to enlarge the tax net. Mm. Uh, we've been talking about technology in the tax space for a while. 
Are we moving? Are we making movements? Yeah, yeah. So when you come to the issue of technology, um, we all know it's a, I mean, for, for Nigeria, it's relatively nascent, right? Um, applying technology to improving tax collections is something that um, is also going to take time. Of course, the, the efforts in the right direction, I mean, the effort. Have, there, have we had movements recorded? Yes. Yeah, there, there's the digitization and provision of interactive voice response intercom services. You know, all of that is supposed to make it easier. Yes. Technology is work in progress. It requires a lot of investments, right? We all know um, the Federal Land Revenue Service is investing a lot, right? I mean, they, they designed internally a system for collecting taxes, which is called the tax pro max, right? So that, I think that's a step in the right direction. But bringing in the issue of AI to tax collection is going to take quite some time, right? It's not something we're going to see immediately. But, but I'm sure, I mean, I understand that there are, there are, there are, I mean, it's their ongoing efforts along that line. Mm. So what about states? I know Lagos states, you know, they are quite, you know, ahead when it comes to adopting this technology. And what about other states? Do, do you know if they are also, I think Kaduna also is part, uh, is a state that has embraced a lot of technology and this voice interactive. Uh, but what, are, do you have an idea, other states? Okay, so now the issue is integrating technology for states, right, will be paucity of data, right? And that's a national issue. Right before you can, it's one thing to develop a technology. It's another thing to make sure um, you get the technology to cut across, you know, the majority of the tax base that you envisage. Right now, for states, it's a bit complicated, right? Because they're battling with um, revenue generation. I mean, they, I mean, they have a lot of funding deficits that they are battling with, and they're not generating much. Right, so for, for states, it's a bit complicated, right? Because a lot of states are not producing maximally. I mean, they're, they're not, the internal revenue generation is not yet there. So it's gonna be a complicated issue. I, I think there has to be a way of um, improving data collection, right? That's the only way investment in technology can pay off. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, you, you still have at the bottom of it, the issue of trust. Uh, Nigerians will ask how accountable are the, the government on different levels, you know, in the management of taxes. Do we see what they're using it for? That will be a motivation to, you know, embrace the system even more. Absolutely. You, you, you're spot on there. The issue of trust also is related to what I call tax morale, right? How easy is it for a taxpayer to um, comply willingly? Right, so that, that speaks to the issue of trust. If I don't trust, I mean, tax creates what is called a fiscal or social contract. And we know in every typical contract, you want, you want to be sure the other party is doing their own part of the, of the bargain, right? So for taxpayers generally, um, the issue of trust is still, a, is, is, is still a big deal. I mean, it's something that um, will not just go away by we just talking about it. I mean, there has to be, um, government has to demonstrate Right, the government has to end this trust by demonstrating to the masses and uh, showing the masses. I mean, we have to see, I mean, taxpayers in general have to see what their money has been put in use. I mean, and um, the sobbing headlines like the ones we've had in the past about um, a sitting governor, you know, doing all sorts of um, involved in corrupt practices. I mean, we have to move away from that life. So, so I think it's a general mind set shift that government has to champion with results it's not just enough to talk about it we have to see um that um government is willing we have to see that um um you you know we have to see that the government, yeah the willpower we have to see that you know from you know what government does how um you know resources are located how resources are spent i mean it's not just enough to borrow for instance the question is what are we borrowing for what is the borrowing used for? And so that speaks to the, that also speaks to the issue of um, debt to GDP ratio, tax to GDP ratio, and all of that. You know, so when you have high debt to GDP ratio, you should one should expect that if debt is put to proper use, 
right? Then we should see the gains, and with time, the tax to GDP ratio should also increase. Yeah, but you know, even the um, international uh, lending agency, IMF, World Bank, they said that tax rates are really low compared to a lot of countries and and all of that. So it, it seems we are still getting away with uh, some things. Yeah. So yeah, very correct. Yeah, tax tax rates is low. You know, we have um. So the, so so the, the point is we have. Nigeria has capacity to generate a whole lot more taxes than we're doing currently, right? But so, so it's, it's, it's about different issues, the trust issues there, the fact that businesses, corporate businesses, individuals are really not willing, you know, to pay tax because they're, they're, they're not um, convinced, right? That so the tax back to the trust use. issue. Back to the trust issue then. There is the issue of systems, you know, tax administration, right? How, uh, so in my experience as a tax professional, I see that, Government um, increasingly puts scrutiny on existing taxpayers, payers already in the tax net, right? Meanwhile, there's a whole lot of, you know, you know, opportunities to bring in more into the tax net. So the question is, what are we doing? Are there systems in place to widen the tax net? Because it's not fair to continue to, um, you know, put burden on existing taxpayers. Now, you know, fair, to be fair, doing their bits. To comply because these guys are already in tax net. When the far returns, you go after them. The question is how? What are, is government doing to widen? So you talk mm, about which is one of the responsibility of the reforms committee, uh, the presidential committee, supposed to widen the tax net, and mm. not it's not, not a matter of increasing taxes. Exactly. That's so. That's one of the things the, the reform committee is working on. But, but I tell you, um, that's not. Um, it's not easy as as as, as it appears. <laughs> you know, and the surface. It's a whole lot of work because man, you have to, you have to deal with the vast informal sector, right? The informal mm. sector is called informal because um, it is not properly regulated. I mean, you have markets. You know, you have. Um, yeah, but I mean, I guess uh, harmonization of the tax system is also one that they will need to work on because if it's harmonized, you know, there have been some taxpayers who have complained about that. If it's harmonized, it's easier, you know, for people to know what they're supposed to pay, who to pay, and when they're supposed to pay. Uh, Fant yes, very, 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 very correct. The mm -hmm. number of taxes as we speak is um, about 40 something, I mean, very high. Yeah, so for more than for the something percent yeah. of, of profit here, yeah, of corporates. Exactly. So now, what, what, what part of the things the um, presidential fiscal reforms, tax reform, fiscal policy committee is doing is reducing the number of taxes, meaning examine the total number of taxes we have, the various taxes levies, right, and strike off the ones that are redundant, more or less, or the ones that are duplicated, right? So that's, that's an issue, tax duplication. It affects ease of doing business for the small, you know, businesses, you know, mm -hmm. so they have to deal with a lot, I mean, levies here and there. Um, you go to some states, you, you see economic development levy. Meanwhile, it's also collected at federal government That's level. So mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of... Um, yeah, talk about harmonization. Thank you so much uh, for your time. Partner at Tax Services, Transact and Chartered Accountant, uh, Mr. Victor Athi. Thank you. Thanks for having me.